Greetings, Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about using ArcGIS dashboards in instruction, research, and campus operations. Using ArcGIS dashboards in instruction, research, and campus operations. Happy to take questions and comments. Joseph Kursky here, geographer, educator, GIS professional. Happy that you're with me today. The purpose of this presentation and workshop is to do the following. Understand where dashboards fit into the ArcGIS system. It's a system, it's a platform from ESRI, Environmental Systems Research Institute. Dashboards are incredibly powerful. Number two, gain skills in creating and maintaining dashboards. Number three, gain confidence that you can use dashboards in your instruction, research, campus operations, and in your own career path. And lastly, connect you to ESRI support and additional resources available to you as instructors, researchers, operations managers, and students. Something for everyone, and I hope it's useful and valuable. What is a dashboard? A dashboard is a rich display of information in a small amount of space, a information-rich display. Think of the dashboard in your car, although I never had a car with as cool a dashboard as this one. Think of a dashboard in a vehicle. It's got a lot of information in a short amount of space. Same thing with an ArcGIS dashboard. Lots of information, graphs, charts, images, videos, indicators, maps, in a short amount of space. Ideally one screen, although it can have tabs linking to additional screens. A dashboard is commonly thought of as a single screen of information or a display with charts on it. That's kind of a simple definition, but here are a couple of examples and a way of thinking about these as maybe categorizing these as two types. Snapshot dashboards. They're a snapshot in time and space. Okay, total population, for example, here at Pittsburgh. Monitoring dashboards, by contrast, change as data changes. Okay, so in this case, 311 requests for the same city. That changes as those requests come in. How do you link them to real time feeds, etc.? So, snapshot and monitoring dashboards, both very useful. ArcGIS dashboards are map centric web applications with interactive elements elements to draw the user's attention to specific items or data feeds they're intuitive and they're also quick to create and to maintain means of sharing data within an organization or with outside audiences just like other things in the arcgis platform you can share these with just a few colleagues with nobody or on the other end of the scale with everyone in the world with a link it also helps simplify the display of complex information because you're getting a lot of information again in a short amount of space. Some of that, some of that information is from real-time feeds. Dashboards look clean and they're simple to configure. Again, dragging and dropping as we'll see in this workshop with no coding required. But with some coding on your tool belt, you have even more power. More about that in a bit too with some examples. Who has not seen this dashboard? This is probably the most famous dashboard in the world. It's certainly the most viewed dashboard with views in the trillions with a T. Everybody with a device, a tablet, a laptop, a phone has seen the JHU Johns Hopkins University COVID dashboard. Why? Because it's incredibly useful and valuable to people as they make decisions about mask mandates, where to visit, where to go, and so on as we navigated and still navigate our way through COVID. The grim but important dashboard that it is. So that's an example of an ArcGIS dashboard. As you can see, this one has tabs at the bottom for additional screens, but it is a lot of information in a short set of real estate, if you will, short screen. This is meant, these next few slides, to get you thinking about the difference between a map, an interactive map, and a dashboard. Here's an ArcGIS online map. This is in the classic map viewer, but we have a new map viewer as well with uh, some tools on the right-hand side and less tools on the top. But basically, you've got a map with some tools on it and some layer information. A dashboard with that same map has the map in it, but also, in this case, about uh, hydrants, a indicator in the top left, it's got a gauge, well actually two gauges, in the middle left and the bottom left, and when the, with the map on the right. So again, paging back, here's the map, here's the dashboard. You get additional information. Also notice on the top bar, there is a filter capability. And there's also some tools in the upper right of the map. I'll show you how to create those, both of those things in this workshop. Here's another dashboard. You've got three elements here. You've got hydrants recently in inspected 
uh, or maybe drainage ditches or discharges. But recently inspected, so there's a filter running behind the scenes. I'll show you how to do that as well. And a map, it's got a flag, in other words, color, indicating illegal or illicit discharge sites in the lower left. So how do you do that? How do you indicate when something happens in the data to flag it somehow with a color or a bold text or some sort of flashing indicator or whatever, other things that you can do? And it also has a gauge in the upper left. Here's a dashboard as well with the same kind of theme in it, but it also has a video. So in showing you that these dashboards, which are part of web mapping applications, which include web mapping, uh, web, web app builder, experience builder, story maps are web mapping applications, dashboards, they're all web mapping applications. And they, since they're living in the cloud, you can incorporate multimedia elements, including video. Again, don't just include it because they're there, because it's possible, but include it if it adds value. Here's a dashboard as well, getting you to think about what kinds of things could I create. Here's a gauge also, but also an indicator. And there's some, there's some indications of, ooh, we've got this red triangle with an exclamation point that draws the user's attention. You've got a map there with this different symbology. We'll talk about that. You've got a nice, in easy, fairly easy to interpret chart there with bars, but also the line as well, showing trends. Fascinating to be able to do this. This is used out in the field, in the workplace. So it's not just an exercise in academics. These dashboards are heavily used by state, local, regional, national, international government agencies, nonprofit organizations, academia, private industry, and more in the workplace. For example, work orders. How do I have a field crew of 150 people and I've got to check in and check out data on water mains or electric lines or transportation infrastructure, whatever it is. These are actually being used out in the, out in the field and in the workplace because they're incredibly valuable. You can see the work order here with, oh, there's some possible leaking in the distribution of this water system, for example. Here's a damaged valve. Let's go inspect it. How do, who, who, who gets out there in the field? Who inspects it, etc. Checking in and checking out data. I like to think of this phrase, from maps to apps in a dash. That's what dashboards allow you to do. Create a app, a web mapping application, from a map in a dash. In other words, in a short amount of time. And what do you need to get started with this? Well, you need a focused idea, just like when you go out in the field or just like you're doing, you're doing anything in a geographic information systems or GIS environment. What do you want to accomplish? Don't just choose tools randomly. What do you want to display in this case for others to see? So what's your focused idea? Who's your, who's your audience for this? So you need to have some GIS savviness. You need to know about layers. You need to know about web mapping. You need to know about web mapping applications and how to build these things. And I'll guide you through this. And what kind of attributes does your data have? Because those are the attributes that you can choose from with your dashboard. Your dashboard is not going to invent things out of nothing. You have to have it in your feature services, in your images, in your data, in order for you to display it in your attributes on your dashboard or in your gauges or in your indicators. So you need to have even before you create the dashboard, what kind of data do you have at your fingertips and or what do you need to create so that you can make a dashboard from it? You need a creator license in ArcGIS Online to build these. You also need a, uh, you don't really need to have a, a, a license at all to view it. This is a, an error on the slide, sorry about that. You, you just need to have, um, you, you, need to, you need to share it with people and then they, your end users don't have to have any sort of ArcGIS Online if you make it public. If you're sharing it just with a group, then your group members need to have an ArcGIS Online account or login to be able to view it. Let's step back for a moment. What's the purpose of geographic information systems and spatial analysis? It's all about location, 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 location. What's where, why is it there, and why should we care? What's where, why is it there, and why should we care? That's my mantra, and I'm sticking to it. So that's the purpose of GIS. And it feeds into questions that I get frequently. What is the best tool for displaying information about X or Y phenomenon or scale or issue or problem? Well, it depends on your goals and your audience and what you want to convey and how you want to communicate it. Remember, the higher goals are to understand, to be able to solve problems, to grapple with the real world issues, and then maybe to take action about an issue or a problem or a situation. So making a map is not the end goal. Making a dashboard is not the end goal. The end goal is to understand something in a deeper, richer way. 
And that's why I have this slide here to keep us anchored on that higher, more noble goal. Yes, it's important to learn about how to make dashboards, but not just for the sake of making dashboards. It's all about why do we want to communicate and how should we communicate? Dashboards can fill a, a very real need for communicating in certain ways. They're not the end all be all for every single situation. Sometimes it might be the experience builder or web mapping application, an instant app, a story map. There's other ways of communicating, a video, um, it's an infographic. And sometimes it's not a map tool at all. It's a report. So it just depends on your goals and your data and your audience. What's the purpose of GIS? Remember, what's where, why is it there, and why should we why should we care about water mains or natural hazards or health or equity or climate, etc.? Remember, GIS has these five components. Analytics. They're not just pretty pictures. They're not just maps online. They have analytics behind them. And dashboards is very well suited for drawing the reader's attention to the fact that maps are analytical tools and they help us make decisions in a smarter way. Methods. GIS is all about methods, models, how you choose to structure your workflow in your geographic information system. Data. Dashboards rely on data. Layers. Geodatabases. Shapefiles. Comma separated value and other tables. And communication. Dashboards are a communication tool. They allow us to communicate a great amount of information in a small amount of space. And finally, dashboards rely on this GIS component of people. People, the audience, the people creating it, the people consuming the information, the people making decisions from the information that you or others are serving in a dashboard. So dashboards, in sum, have great connections to all five components of a GIS, which is another reason why I think it's valuable uh, in the workplace, but also as an instructional tool.